How's it going, friends? Welcome to the Twin Cities. This show tells the stories of the people that we've been lucky enough to help relocate to the Twin Cities, as well as people we've helped buy a home in the Twin Cities, in hopes that hearing their story helps you along the same journey. I'm your host, Jesse Lynch. I run the hardest working real estate team in the game. We are here in our Northeast op Minneapolis office. We call it the shop. Uh, and I'm joined by my co-host and arguably the best agent on my team, Steve Wilk. What's up? Thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or Spotify or wherever you listen or watch to things like this, podcast, video, clips, whatever. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to work with us, we'd love to help. Go to our website, twothetwincities.com. We have a contact form there that you can fill out in like 30 seconds or less. Or shoot us an email directly to info at twothetwincities.com. And uh, we'll get things going and uh, make stuff happen for you. Um, while we are here, I'd like to extend my immense gratitude to the producer of the show, a dude who will build you a deck. Mm. And, yeah, I don't know, uh, pull up podcast. in a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. uh, Paul Winkleman. Don't ask him to change your tire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, today we are joined by our esteemed guest and arguably our favorite client ever, Trevor. Oh. What's up, man? Thanks so <laughs> much for being here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very you. much. Um, so, I guess back, we've known each other for like a hot minute. Long time. I don't know how long, actually, but I've known of you for a long time. Yeah, You know, likewise. like peripherally. Um, not the band. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, but, uh, and then I helped you buy a house like... I don't know, year or two? 2021, okay. I think. Two years ago, probably. Yeah, like August -y or? May, okay. June, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and yeah, bought a condo in Hopkins. Yep. Um, and, and you're, I guess this is fourth wall, but you're our first guest that is, well, second guest, Malcolm, kind of? Kind of. That isn't a relocation, so there's somebody who's like lived here for basically your whole life. Yep. Yeah, Midwest at least. Definitely. Um, but so, okay, what a, where were you born? We can like, you know. A little background. Through, yeah, a little yeah. background of, you know, what that all looks like. Yeah, so I was born in Fargo, North Dakota, um, and my family moved to the metro area when I was probably five or six years old. It was right before kindergarten, I think. Cool, sure. Um, and, I mean, we moved a lot growing up, but always in the metro, so I, I pretty much grew up in between southwest Minneapolis and Bloomington. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I definitely... Probably first time saw you in the Southern Metro, right? Probably, Probably at the garage. garage. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Shouts out. Burns yeah. on his um, own. Yeah. And um, so that all, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, you know, I guess we can fast forward to, and we'll talk a little bit about like those areas, given that you grew up there. Um, but fast forward to 2021, trying to buy a condo. The... I'm curious about, like, I can only kind of remember everywhere we were looking, but I, I do remember it was like Osseo and then like a circle or something like that. Yep, I, uh, I think it was like around 169, west yeah, side yeah. of 169, in between, I guess, basically where I am now, Hopkins and Osseo. Like, yeah, maybe 694 to... North, I don't think we went north. quite that far yeah. north, but um, yeah, in yeah. the vicinity, um, northwest suburbs. And part of that was work, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, do you, like, if you were looking now, where, what are places that you'd be considering living? I'd be moving more westward. Okay. And probably a little bit north. Um, okay. But oh, I, I really love, like, the areas west of the city. It's so a little further away from the metro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I, I still do plenty in Minneapolis and St. Paul, but it's much less of my, uh, routine now so yeah. i'm still 10 minutes away if there's no traffic you know it's so easy to just jump downtown it is way but easy to get, yeah to get around yeah and i love the peace and trees of like west of yeah. the city that's it's just nice quiet. any any spots in particular like any like like when i think west of the city are you thinking like like Rogers or not that far north, not that far west? Not, not that far north or west. Maple Grove? Um, Maple Grove, if yeah. I could afford it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, even Minnetonka, parts of it uh, are yeah, yeah. still in, in my budget, yeah. roughly, you know. And, totally. So that kind of area. Okay. Um, Did you ever spend any time in the cities living when you were younger, like a young adult? 
Yep, yep. I was in uh, Southwest Minneapolis, 39th and Vincent, okay. from like fifth grade until I actually got an apartment okay. with Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was that? Como. Okay, cool. Yep. As one does. Yeah. That is a <laughs> common migratory pattern. Yeah. It's like that or Five uptown. Five people, one bathroom. Nice. You know, just that like 19 year old living. It was... Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, uh, I guess what other spots have you lived in in the cities? Como? Como, Powderhorn, um, Northeast. Okay. Cool. And now Hopkins. Now Hopkins. Um, and so I guess, yeah, Southwest ish. Yep. Right? Yeah. Cool. Um, what and and yeah so you're you're heading westward i like that uh is there uh, what what like tell you, us some stuff about what you like about i was like, gonna yeah, what draws like, you yeah, to, uh, to the west <clears throat> trees bike paths um less people yeah i feel like those are the three sparseness just, just jump right out yeah um yeah, I have discovered I really love quiet. Yeah. Um, in my neighborhood, if I go outside at 10 p.m., you know, you you just hear nature sounds and a little bit from the highway, but very little. So it's it's just peaceful. You know, <laughs> I'm stressed with work all the time. I'm always busy. And yeah. So it's nice if I want to take a five minute walk, I can find like a really quiet, beautiful place. Sweet. Love that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, certainly the further west you go, just like the chiller and chiller yep. it gets. We were in. Uh, shooting in like Independence. Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah. we were like, dude, yeah. Very, I think it was like, like downright rural. Yeah, it felt yeah. it felt like being Over like there. in uh, in the Dances with Wolves like movie, and like except there's like some huge mansions, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So weird, but. It was weird. We, yeah, just like so kind of glanced over and just saw someone riding on a horse. Yeah, <laughs> just like, yeah. yeah. This is cool. We're like, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's still like. 30 minutes, 35 yeah. minutes from the city. From like right around here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yep. Um, that's cool. Um, out of all the places that you've lived, what's been your favorite? Maybe not counting where you are currently. Um, that's a really good question. They're all so good for different reasons. Northeast, just like the most central and the most going on yeah. right around me. Um, Where'd you live in Northeast? That's where I live now. So that was... 22nd and Jackson, okay. I think. So like a block away from Central on sure. 22nd, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean, we had plenty of good restaurants around, and I feel like shows were happening around there too. Yeah. Great spot. 22nd and Central, you said? I believe yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, tons of stuff over there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll get to some of that stuff, uh, some of the specific stuff over there that you liked, but... Um, do you, you, so you're in a condo, you, there's an HOA. Yep. A, I think a lot of people are curious about what HOA, I, I think your HOA is like kind of small. I don't know. Yeah. Relatively. Yeah. Um, God, I mean, there's probably a hundred units. Okay. okay. That's not crazy. Something like that. <clears throat> um, they haven't given me any problems. I haven't given them any problems yeah. to deal with. Yeah. Um, so I don't really have much experience with that, but I really love having an HOA that mows for me and, yeah. and <laughs> sure. keeps the sidewalk. Care and of. luckily they actually do that stuff. They're That's on top of it during yep. the winter and stuff. Yep. It works out really nice. Very um, cool. That's great yeah. to hear. You don't always hear that. No. Yeah. yeah. Some people <laughs> are like, I got here. like, I hate my HOA. Yeah. And like, wow. A lot of sucks. never again people. Yeah. yeah. It bums me out. Yeah. So well, the rubber experience. hits the road when you need them for something. So yeah, sure. hopefully when that happens for you, they'll, it'll, your experience will be similar to the yeah. positive ones you've had so far. But yeah, yeah that's when yeah. your place is pretty well maintained. I remember that, you know, that stood out. We were like, yeah, it seems like they do a good job, Yeah. you know, and nothing where you're like, oh, Clearly, like, they're not taking care of it, you know. You can see that, usually. Definitely. You know, but Yeah, they're, like, repaving the, the parking lot and everything. Sweet. And it's not like there's potholes or anything, but it's a little bit cracked. Like, pitted and stuff unsightly, like that. Unsightly. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. As you yeah. said a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find it unsightly. That's a bit unsightly, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. no, they're, they're good. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that word back into my lexicon. I love that word. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. And then... Um, do you, uh, yeah, I don't really want to talk too much about the process. It was, it was pretty simple. Like we looked at a few, I remember there was like a couple you were like, eh, these are kind of cool. But then what you settled on, 
Uh, was single family home ever an option? Was that something you considered? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you don't remember how many we looked at because I felt like I don't we think did it was that many. so many. Yeah. And That's I a common thing we hear from buyers, but like we were actually talking about it just today, this morning. Like, yeah, like it's, I don't know if people just don't register for them, but like this is our job. And like, yeah. Yeah. Just, like it, you know, it's, we are more than happy to show as many as it takes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, people f- get like self-conscious about like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, like, if you have to how guess many? how many. I, I would say we probably looked at six or seven. Well, that's nothing. That's and, literally. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, so yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> that's literally nothing. Nothing. I would say 20 is average, maybe wow. on the low end of average. I do remember you being like, sorry to, I'm like, dude, like, yeah, yeah. And yeah, six or seven is nothing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I think we put two or three offers down that got shot down. Yeah. Um, I remember that one townhouse. There was a townhouse. There was the house that we wrote the, um, how the, what kind of letter? As, like oh, love letter. Love letter. Yeah, we wrote yeah, a love yeah. letter to a house because it was just beautiful. I mean, it was old, but yeah, um, it would have been great. That was in Northeast. Okay. Mm. Um, Single family. Was yep. it? Was okay. it off Stinson? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I remember that house. Yeah, um, cool house. Yeah, it was. It would have been great, but honestly, now that I have a condo, it's like you couldn't convince me <laughs> to do five hours of yard work Dude. a week, yeah. even Seriously. and that's probably minimal. It's like, I, I love living in a condo. You're really like, I almost good. agreed to that much. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the investment of a single family is, is not to be, you know, downplayed of like, you know, the resale and all that, but the lifestyle of a condo totally. is So if you were bad. to move again, it would be condo? Condo or townhouse. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. HOA. Yeah. There are some single families now with HOAs where they like mow your lawn and stuff. So I've, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool though. Yeah, that's great. You probably flip a coin. It's the exact opposite of like this is tight, and I love this lifestyle. And other people are like, I wish I hadn't bought a condo. Yeah. You know, or maybe not. I wish I hadn't, but like, like I have some regrets about it. You yeah. Know? Like, I think if I had HOA. like an abundance of free time, it would not be the option but yeah. like yeah i really can't imagine on my days off being like wow my yard looks awful gotta my neighbors mow, probably gotta... hate me yeah. all that stuff <laughs> yeah. well, move to northeast your neighbors aren't gonna complain about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> non-manicured lawns yeah. yeah yeah um okay is uh let's see so do i guess we're, we're all we're all the way into cut this just kidding uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there um do you have like a, uh, if, if location and proximity to things didn't matter around the metro, other places that you, aside from just west, because I'm sure to some degree you're tied to job and stuff yep. like that. Um, is there anywhere in Minnesota or in the Twin Cities that you love? Hmm. I, I really do love the Lake Minnetonka area. Because it's like Minnetonka. It's, it's sick, yeah. Unbelievable, great restaurants, and of course you can find peace and quiet everywhere. Um, that would be my number one, but honestly, probably number two would be the Maple Grove area. Yeah. Um, because it, yeah. it is quiet, it is nice. Um, it's very lush. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of green, yeah. Yep. A lot of water. And also close to my work, um, there's there's just kind of a lot that that has to offer, and mountain bike trails and whatnot. And yeah. Yeah. Nice All right, you mentioned biking. Let's get into it. Yeah. What is, do you have a favorite or what are some of your favorite places to bike? Bicycle, motorcycle. Bicycle. Bicycle. So you can never go wrong with like the actual greenway. Yeah. Um, that runs like, I mean, 50 feet from my condo to uptown. Oh, oh whoa. That's, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like right off of You're, the trail. It That's runs, awesome. It runs like... I don't know, a hundred yards from my place, maybe nice. something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy that I can bike that close to you just yeah. on the one trail. Yeah, take yeah. it east, get to the city, take it west, and you can get like to Delano, I think. Yeah, like way out there. Dang. You know? Do you use bike as like a primary method of transportation, or is I it more for to. okay? Yep. I, Even I don't... living where you live now. Uh, no. Okay. N- not in Hopkins. Um, that's like my go out and kind of sure, yeah. get some fresh air and unwind a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Um, other, any other, you said mountain biking. Yep. Where do you mountain bike ride? So Lone Lake Park, okay. um, which is maybe a quarter mile from my condo. It's just a little <laughs> lake okay. in Hopkins. And yeah. 
there's trails all throughout the trees. You can also take the bike path to the Minnesota River. Yeah. And there's trails literally up and down the whole river. Um, like mountain bike style trails? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Falling over logs you got to get over and muddy trails. Like, I mean, everything. It's <laughs> That's cool. Not quite maintained and it's unofficial, but I mean, that's kind of the idea. Yeah, exactly. Bit, right. Yeah. Go explore, find something. Okay. Are cool. you involved in like the Twin Cities bike community at all? Like, have you ever done rides? Like, Fulton, I know, does like a, my wife's done it a few times, but so, like, you know, like a hundred mile or 50 mile in a day or anything like that. I have not. Okay. But I used to go to every critical mass. Religious oh thing. yeah yeah and dude i remember that so it stopped for like 10 years and apparently last month they had the first one in 10 years 10 years ago was probably when i mean i wasn't going to every single one but yeah yeah dude that's crazy How i forgot cool all that? about that you remember that yeah. yeah do you know what that is yeah the huge bike yeah like basically like i'm probably not yeah. gonna do describe it properly but from what i remember the idea was like to create awareness i guess like they like kind of took over for lack of a better term like roads yeah. um yeah. yeah so you meet in loring park and i mean everyone is everywhere in loring park there's so many people there and then like they would shut down certain streets there were like police escorts on bicycles and they would lead the bike or the the mass you know and <laughs> you shut down streets it would take six seven ten minutes for like the whole group to get past just one block you know people had speakers on their bikes yeah. and um i mean it was just a, a party and it was awareness <laughs> for you know getting more bike paths and here yeah. we are mission accomplished yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why that. they stopped because yeah, yeah like, take right. notes yeah. <laughs> you know, other other metros yeah we did it yeah that's cool um was that like once a month like now i'm trying to think back it was like, like the I... fourth thursday or something like that uh -huh. in in the summer months or starting spring i can't really remember what they were yeah right on yeah uh, yeah, that was, yeah when i was like living like in the uptown area yeah for sure yeah doing the most amount of biking i ever did in my yeah. life yeah uptown was probably my peak bike <laughs> main know. transportation yeah i mean so when you I went to the main, cities but... was it was it your primary method of transportation yeah. okay yep winter I, Yes. Can you speak on that? Because we've got people who have asked about that. Yeah, yeah. What's it like to ride a bike during the winter as your main form of transportation? So it's only scary or whatever <laughs> until you just do it. Okay. Um, the general rule of thumb, you should be cold for five to ten minutes when you start your ride, and then your body heat will warm up. Um, and it's amazing because no one is on the paths. Yeah. At all. It's just you. It's so quiet and serene, especially when it's like freshly snowed and yeah. the snow dampens all the acoustics around you. It, it's really great. But this might be a stupid question, but they don't keep the paths clear, right? Like the greenway? Um, they do, do a they? pretty good job. Okay. Yeah. Um, right on. I mean, if you're riding in a storm, it's going to be pretty awful or right <laughs> after like a freeze and a melt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough, but buy some studded tires, like 40 bucks a piece. And then, Did you switch out tires for seasons? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I had them for, I mean, four seasons, five seasons, something like that. Cool. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, they're studded. Yeah. You know, yeah. They probably hold up in a, in a way that a normal tire might not. Yep. Every know. day through the winter? or were it, Probably not every day, but okay. like frequently. Most days. It, it was not rare for me to bundle up and go biking yeah i will say i didn't do much of it for fun it was more commuting yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. you know it's just like gotta do it don't mind doing it much um any words of wisdom for anyone who's thinking about doing it other than get right tires just get like a good underlayer okay what are we talking for underlayer like if you can find some under armor leggings and like long sleeve shirt then wear a t-shirt sweatshirt like a windbreaker even you don't even need like a real jacket because yeah. it's very easy to get sweaty cooking. Yeah. Sure. yeah and then you stop for five minutes and you get back out and just you're shaking awful. probably yeah yeah, yeah. Were yeah. you riding a single speed i was fixed gear actually okay <laughs> yeah so dumb <laughs> i was young <laughs> yeah yeah you're like this is the bike that i have yeah. you know yeah. yeah but something with less gears you know yeah, you're gonna get salt sure. all over it um the simpler the better yeah for that mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't ride like a nice bike in the winter. Yeah. Um, huh. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. Um, so, okay, while we're kind of talking about riding, you are into motorcycles. Um, how long have you owned a motorcycle? I got a motorcycle when I was 15. 
Sick. Whoa. Uh, it was a 1978 Yamaha XS750, super cool bike. Um, and I decided very quickly I needed a fast motorcycle. Yeah. And so I got a sport bike, Triumph Speed Triple. And I had that for, I think, 10 seasons. And then 2021, I actually, we, we had lost a couple of offers. I can't remember what they were. I was like, oh, I'm never getting a house. This isn't going <laughs> to oh. work out. I'm going to oh. buy a nice motorcycle. I remember. And so I, I bought a Harley Lowrider S. Um, I remember this. Yep. Did yeah. that mess up your credit at all? I mean, you got... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did that limit what you were capable of buying? It, buying it would have. Had I, had I kept um, down the avenue of trying to find a house. Um, but you gotcha. sort of like adjusted to condo anyway. Exactly, yeah. I, I just felt like I was meeting a lot of resistance and sure. maybe... It just wasn't smart to do that. So. You, might, you may have answered this already, but were you were you looking in the spring, or what time of year? A little were bit. You? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. That's the, definitely that's, wasn't winter. Yeah. That's the most difficult. Yeah. Most competitive part. And of it was twenty twenty one, especially for a single family home. Spring oh, twenty. Man. Yeah. You, spring twenty twenty one. You had all so the three all the cards yeah. were against you, and a lot of yeah. hype about it too. You're yeah. hearing a lot of input of like it's basically impossible to buy a house right yeah. now, and mm-hmm. you know it wasn't, but it was hard. You know. Definitely. <clears throat> and. Yeah, and and you know the yeah, it's like well, thinking that you looked at seven houses. I'm like, that's crazy. Like that's so few. <laughs> uh, but and that you were like, man, I put this guy through so yeah, much. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> putting him through the ringer. Yeah. Okay, but, but <laughs> I, looked, I looked at 15 houses the other day oh, with one like, couple. Was, wow. Uh, yeah, the, in a day. Yeah, Jeez. and that's not even you know that was like that's was a big done, day, but it's not six. like yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. not like a yeah the craziest thing I've ever heard. Not a life ruiner. Yeah. It, uh, I've showed, I showed a couple 40 houses in a weekend and they bought the 39. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like seven, it's like, yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Nothing. Um, but so wait, so yeah, so not a single family dropped your, what the kind of price range that you were looking in and that, and you got a motorcycle. That's sick. So it it sounds like a win, win. Oh my God. I'm winning. Yeah. Likes the work now. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Perfect. Um, so, okay. Talking motorcycles. Uh, one thing that I, we actually had somebody in a, in like, we do zooms with clients all the time who are like, you know, across the country. One, we had, we got a question of like, what, what are the best like scenic drives or scenic rides? And I was like, Ooh, I like this question. But then I thought I'd ask you. I was not able to put have any input. A motorcycle <laughs> or just car. I don't, I'm not really doing that for um, Yeah, his you know, was kind leisure, of, you know, like but, around the lakes, you know, yeah. which is, you know, you said is also a sick spot, yeah. you know, but can't like, you can't like open up. You right. Know? <laughs> You're like going 30. Yeah. Yeah. If I have like three hours of free time where I need to be back home in three hours, like the best route ever, I'll just take like the interstate to get up there, but take 35 North to highway eight, which will take you to Taylor's falls, Mm. I think. Um, and instead of going that way, you take a, you you take 95 South and, and on that corner is Franconia sculpture garden. Yeah. Um, so once you get there, tees, you can do Franconia or you can go to Taylor's falls, but yeah. Yep. Um, Franconia is just a great place to stop and kill some time. It's so interesting. Uh, and then 95 What south. is it exactly? I'm not familiar with Franconia. Oh, yeah, interesting. It's, yeah. it's a sculpture garden. Okay. Um, I can't remember the artist who, who makes it all, but I mean, it, it's a huge lot and, and there's really unique stuff there. Is um, it public? Like, yep. Oh, wow. Yep. It's totally free, I believe. I, I know that now they have a building there. Um, I'm sure you can buy stuff. But um, sure, yeah, it's great. so you like get off and walk around for a little bit, or you yep. just drive through. Yep, get out, walk around. I mean, you could get lost there for three hours if you wanted to. But oh wow, I've been there plenty, so it's always just kind of a quick loop around the lot and sure get on, going. On September second, they have Franconia Five Minute mo- uh, Film Festival. Nice, oh, yeah, and it's all outside. But, but yeah, the is this on the Minnesota or Wisconsin side? Minnesota. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm not doing it justice, but uh, I can't. I can't tell who does it. Let me do about about well, job opportunities. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Friend Konya Sculpture Park is the preeminent artist-centered sculpture park in the Midwest. Founded in 1996, uh, Franconia provides physically and intellectually wide-open spaces that. Oh, 
that inspire new ways of thinking through access to contemporary, con contemporary sculpture, installation, and land art. Uh, no credit to the person who started it, hmm. at, huh. least, at least in that section. It's awesome. Uh, okay. Yep. Right yeah. on. It's a really great trip, and it's, I mean, it'll probably take you 45 minutes to get there, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, stop there, hang out, um, drink some water, and then there's like a 15 or 18 mile road on 95 South which brings you right to Stillwater. Mm -hmm. okay. If you've never been to Stillwater, you definitely need to go spend an afternoon there. Yeah. I mean, so many cute little stores and beautiful riverfront. Um, but that that strip, 95 north of Stillwater, pretty cool. It's gorgeous. Even south of it, too, is also yeah. very oh, God, cool. Yeah. Along St. Croix, basically. Yep. Yeah. Go down to Aft. Dan? Afton, yep. yep. Yeah. The great riding down there. And then you can even take it to Hastings. Yep. And then I think pretty much from there you can get to like Red Wing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's cool. I, I said the yeah. Stillwater to the dude. Um, but yeah, it's cool to hear you say that. I don't know that I would have been able to say like this route, but I think I said 95. It's just so yep. sick over there. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It's like windy and hilly. Yeah. Sure. Um, Particularly good for a motorcycle. River banks. Yeah. Yes. Or bluffs, I guess. Yeah. It's like what you're looking for, uh, uh, you know, in the fall. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Lord. What about Lake Minnetonka area? Is that good or not as good? It, it's great for like people and house watching sure. stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, in the summer it's busy, you know, like lots of traffic, lots of people doing the same exact thing and mm. it's so probably it, 35 mile an hour roads or something. So yeah. it's beautiful. It's windy. It's inspiring. Yeah, it kind of got like a good amount of like up and down and wind, but yep. Yeah. And there are plenty of side roads you can take that are absolutely open. Um, yeah. And you can, open up and have fun yeah. next to a lake but uh, for the most part that's like when I want to dream about the future <laughs> and see like a you know, 10 million dollar <laughs> mansion one of my favorite activities actually yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> looking at sick houses and going like wow yeah. yeah yeah my dad used to do that growing up and I just was so bored didn't get it at all and it's so funny how now I'm like <laughs> go for a little what cruise yeah. just yeah. go see how people are doing things yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Any other rides that you can think of? Um, I also love going west, so uh, 394 until it turns into 12. Yeah. Getting out to like Delano area yeah. and then following the um, Root River, I think it is. Okay. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's what it is. But so taking that north, that'll bring you pretty much to Rogers area. Okay. Um, and then just taking it back down. But those are more like straight roads, but yeah. it is just so beautiful and open and um, big cornfields, yeah. you know. I'm a Midwest boy and I love <laughs> cornfields, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Blue sky, green field. It's yeah. nice. Sure. Lots are you, trees. so is the, are you part of any like bike community and uh, motorcycles? No. Wise? Okay. No, I just commute. I've been commuting pretty much my whole adult life on a motorcycle as much as I can. Okay. Do you and own a car? I do, yeah. Okay. You got all the methods. That's cool. I try to. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. car is the most neglected. It is like kind of scary to drive right now and okay. I wouldn't let anyone else drive it <laughs> out of fear that something bad's going to happen. Yeah. But so motorcycles primary? Definitely in the warm months, yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, my car sits a lot in the summer. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, Okay. You the another thing that I, you know, associate you with a lot. Obviously, where we met is music. Uh, this might be a difficult question to answer. I'm I'm curious about you know as somebody who plays music. What is, what is like your overall assessment of the music world here? I was going to ask like favorite whatever, but I'm more like you know, you've played up quite a few places like mm -hmm. you know what, how do you what do you think about the opportunities i guess available i don't want to say like the people in you know whatever maybe that's part of it but yeah what do you you know do you like the music world in minnesota i, I think we're very lucky to be here where we're a, a big enough city to have credibility and we're not a big enough city to be you know just like completely oversaturated with musicians yeah so if you want to like play at a bar do, doing covers for three hour sets like once a week you can do that and that's like a steady source of income yeah um 
if you want to do punk DIY stuff, there is so much opportunity for that. Um, we're really lucky to have First Ave. You know, they they just book so many local shows, yeah. so many big shows, and just the mixing that happens with real touring musicians, like career musicians and local musicians. I feel like that doesn't really happen many places. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, while it being accessible to locals. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like you can get to a point and you could play First Ave. Whereas, yeah, I think other places, like, nah, that probably won't happen. Yeah, but, you know. Absolutely. Or they're going to just, like, put you on a Monday, Tuesday night yeah. thing. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I've had a lot of really great opportunities with music here. And it's only because of the first app team and the current. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what's cool. the, do you have, or, like, what's the local musician's relationship with the current? Like, are, do they provide an opportunity to like other than just like broadcasting a ton of local music which they do which i think is pretty cool but yeah outside of that is there anything that they provide definitely they they organize a lot of shows at first avenue venues and whatnot so like we got we got like dished like silver platter dished a bunch of <laughs> really nice like paying shows um we we did play main room first ave we played the fitzgerald theater um, cocktails in the castle. Franconia. I, I don't actually know if that was the current, but like the current will organize shows and and put locals on them. Um, so they're they're great for local musicians. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Do you first have favorite venue? Yeah. Okay. Any <laughs> any second? That seemed like anyone given? close. Yeah. yeah. Any second place? Um, I really think. I had never been to the Fitzgerald Theater, but I, I really think that was my favorite place I've ever played, even beyond Main Room. Main Room was cool to scratch that like bucket list yeah, off, yeah. but because um, you've been thinking about it longer. Yeah, <laughs> but Fitzgerald, it's like the walls are decadent, yeah, and yeah, sure. just like the seated view in front of you of people is just remarkable, and wow. the sound was perfect, and the sound guy had this dog named Vienna. Wow, um, Vienna has an Instagram you need to check out. Uh, <laughs> Vienna, oh, I can't remember the actual Instagram, but it's great. I don't know. The, the staff treated us great. The venue was amazing. Um, it was awesome. That's cool. Can you, like, going back to First Ave a little bit, um, can you talk a little bit about why you think it is the best? Because I think it's the best, but I've never played in a band. I've been to most of the places that, you know, most of the venues that, you know, I've heard people mention when that question gets brought up, but uh, most of it, if not all. But... There is something about it that sticks out to me. Can you talk a little bit about why it's, you think it's the best? Yeah, there's plenty of places to play with nice lights, nice sounds, nice rooms, but how long have they been here? And who have they helped raise? And what kind of culture is associated with them, if at all? You know, and, and so First Avenue has been helping out people like me since well before I was a twinkle in someone's eye, you know? It, it was, yeah. It, just goes way back um there's a weight to it especially if you get to like go into the back area where the garage is and you see like there's a Tyler the creator poster that he made by hand i mean there, there's just yeah. little things that that show you that real people have been through here for years so um as a like from a musician standpoint that's definitely it it's just legend um sure but then secondly i think it's the best because they really do pay attention to our scene um, and you know they're gonna book you if they think you have something going on and if you do a good job you show up on time and they're gonna keep booking you and asking you if you want to be on shows yeah so. that's cool is there anything about the layout that I mean because that's kind of that's just some like a person who goes to shows or used to a lot more when I was a little bit younger but like that was one of the things that I liked so much about it it's just like the perfect size the perfect you know like the yep. upper level the floor all the <clears throat> yeah there's like no bad seat in in the main room of first ave mm -hmm. and, and true kind of especially seventh street too actually you know because that's a much smaller room yeah um but yeah i think first ave is about as big as you can get without or while still feeling personal mm -hmm. you know it's not true. an impersonal room even when it's totally sold out yeah yeah for i mean many of the coolest shows i've seen or you know that like come to mind is like the best shows were there and it's for sure the setting is a part of it, you know, yep. it plays a pretty big role, you know, I've seen the same band there and somewhere else. And I'm like, you're like, oh, they were better the other time. I'm like, yeah, but is that because it was first half, you know, <laughs> sure. yeah. it's hard. Yeah. You're like, I don't know. It could have been, you know, yeah. but yeah, that's cool. Is it uh Vienna the dog? 
Yes, Vienna the dog. Oh, Vienna dog, sorry. Vienna dog. Vienna dog. Yeah. Yeah, this dog was chill. Let me tell Looks you what. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Omnipotent uh, looking. Like, yeah. Just controls the venue, keeps everyone in check. It's That's like awesome. having the, the mirror at the back of a bar keeps yeah. people in check. <laughs> yeah. Vienna is like, yeah. humble yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Uh, I think that was great on, on the music world. Uh, people, you know, people always wonder about, like, they, it's funny because I think locally we, we know the Twin Cities music scene to be like, be very strong, you know, mm -hmm. and to like have a lot of history. And the amount of people who ask, like, is there like any, you know, can you see stuff? Like, are there shows that come through? And it's like, yeah, like pretty much everything, yeah. you know, and pretty much any night of the week there's, uh, well, I mean, literally any other week, there's tons of stuff happening. Definitely. Uh, but, yeah, I guess it depends on genre, you know? Like, if you have yeah. very specific genre, okay, maybe you might have to wait, you know? If you want to see major country, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, you might have to... Um, that might be only every now and then, you know, yeah. at the U.S. Bank Stadium or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely. You know? Uh, but, yeah, how many... Does anywhere have, like, tons and tons of that coming through? Probably not really. Nashville. Maybe that's, Nashville. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Um, but yeah, okay, that's cool. Is, uh, uh, you, I guess let's talk about the, uh, the last thing, the third thing, not the last thing, the third thing that I associate you with primarily is tattoos. That's what you do for a living. Yep. Uh, how long have you been doing that? Uh, professionally since 2013. And I really? Yeah. Man. It was 10 years this, wow. this like May, May 23rd Congrats, or something man. like that's that. That's awesome. It's crazy. <laughs> I feel too young to have. 10 years of experience <laughs> anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been a decade. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yep. Cool. And so, I guess, where do you tattoo out of now? So, now I'm at Two Muses Tattoo, uh, shamelessly representing. Oh, not Love at it. all. Yeah. yeah. Shouts out. Two okay. Muses is just the best little studio. We're in Osseo, which is just uh, east of Maple Grove, yep. 169 North. Um, sweet little town like small town feel but yeah. you're 15 minutes away from minneapolis yeah. so it's really great there sweet There's uh how long have you been there i've been there since fall of 2020 okay um i think zach was supposed to open the studio that spring and then of course sure. COVID happened sure um, <laughs> and i was kind of telling myself that i didn't want to work there uh, because I did like where I was working before, but Zach has always been like a really solid, solid individual, and yeah. I knew I wanted to be kind of under his wing. So cool. I waited a little bit and then asked him for a job. And cool. Luckily, he said yes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you kind of like <laughs> it's now okay. the right yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I actually I was his first paying customer because his nice. first client on his first day of business got COVID. Oh, so no. he put something out there and I was like, that's me. I'm gonna get tattooed. <laughs> yeah. And who, so who is this person? Zach Kinsey. Okay. Um he's been tattooing in Minneapolis for twenty something years. He's been tattooing for probably twenty five or twenty six years. Okay. Um yeah, but I was sitting there getting tattooed and I was like asking questions. How's this going to work? Percentage or like rent or, <laughs> yeah. you know. Like, yeah, is it like a stylist? Vibe? Like how is, what's the relationship between the a tattoo artist and the place that they... Everywhere is different, but it, it is either commission or rent. So you're paying okay. for your booth, you're either, or you're paying, you know, Chair or, or a cut, or yep. basically, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I was like asking him questions while getting tattooed that were obviously leading him on that I'm gonna ask for a job, but yeah. I was too afraid to like put him on the spot then. Yeah. So I sent him an email like that night or something like that. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Know. Was he familiar with you f before that? Yep, okay. he did my sleeve. Okay. Um, and that was at Uptown Tattoo in Uptown, yeah. on Lindo and 27th. And yep. They rock too. I really love that shop. But yeah, that's been around for forever. Yeah. I mean, not literally, but a long time. 20, 23 years, probably 23 or 24. I went to their 20th and 21st like birthday party. It was pretty cool. Crazy. It's yeah. above like Bob's job. Bob yep. Hot? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is also a cool spot. Great spot. Yeah, very cool. Uh, that reminds me of like early uptown for, yeah. you know, probably like when you and I were living there. Cool. Yeah. Early uptown. <laughs> yeah. 2010. Yeah, for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> my early days of Uptown. Uh, it had like a little bit of a different identity, you know, at the time. Yeah. But I, in my, from my perspective, which is definitely skewed, but yeah, it had a way different yeah. identity. Yeah. Uh, okay. What, this might be putting you on the spot. Do you have any other favorite tattoo shops or tattoo shops or I don't, maybe artists that you would, would recommend people to? Yeah. 100%. Other than you, obviously. Okay, if you're not going to go with me, yeah. No. yeah. Um, Uptown Tattoo is great. They've been around a long time. Um, Seawolf Tattoo is really great. Um, there's a shop called Green River Tattoo that's opening with a couple artists. Uh, one from Seawolf, Stephen Scorjanic, and the other, Colin Rigsby, who was at Stone Arch Tattoo. Stone Arch Tattoo is really great. Um, I mean, God, the, I'm about to name like every tattoo shop in the city. They're, Keep they're, it moving. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, no, it's there's fine. so many. Like, yeah, Minneapolis people are really lucky. Um, there, there's great shops everywhere. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, those those are probably my my top Short choices. List. Yep. Sorry if you forgot anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we edit you in later. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. How That's, do you? How would you describe your style? Um, I mean, like the traditional vein of okay. tattooing, but I'm not really doing like like clipper ships and like sure. swallows all day long. Yeah. Um, but I like bold lines. I like the aesthetic of traditional tattooing, but yeah, I'm not going to do like Navy tattoos all day. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. So what, what's the, what's the dynamic between this might be a little bit too in the weeds, but I'm just curious. What is the dynamic between like the person who's coming to you, the artist, um, and like what they want versus like what you will do? Um, I'm always going to kind of play off of my strengths. Um, if you want something that I'm not certain I can do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you in the consultation before I even get to your skin. Um, like that isn't really your thing. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you look at my Instagram and you like what you see, you're going to love what I'm going to do for you. <laughs> sure. If yeah. you are only showing me photos from Pinterest, nothing that I've ever done. Yeah you're going to get a like well done tattoo, but that's not where I sing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if you like what you see on online, you'll love what I do for you. If you don't, it's I'll like we're like requesting a song for a band. If there was like a 3D yeah. jazz yeah. band, you're like, do you know any Meshuga? They'd be like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could maybe do something. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, it's going to be like, it might be cool, but you're like, well, that's not Meshuga. And you're like, yeah, I know, but yeah. that's not what I do. Sure. You know, definitely. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Is um, any, any, this is not something I thought I'd be asking. Any suggestions to anybody who is thinking about becoming a tattoo artist? Oh, man. Or, or maybe moving, okay, moving here and they already do it or they're uh, apprenticing or something like that. Yeah, if, if you're moving here to tattoo, you're going to be taken care of. You're going to be very happy. We have like a really strong economy for our size and you know, like our, our buying power in Minnesota is strong. Like we have, we just have a great economy um, yeah. more or less. Um, buying power as it relates to how much is a dollar worth? Yeah. Oh, here, oh I see what you're saying. LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seattle. And that, that is related to what people are able to do with their disposable. Income. Exactly. Got yeah. it. Okay. So we are a hub of some really big companies and that does overall help our economy a lot. Totally. Yeah. Okay. And then also it, living here isn't so wildly expensive that you're making a lot, but you're spending everything you have just to like rent a one bedroom. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. I feel like I've had a lot of opportunities to move cool places to tattoo. It's like, at the end of the day, this is this is home, and it's home for a good reason. That's true. We're taken care of here. Let's touch on that. Yeah, I know, I know great... you've, you've gone to, like, Hawaii. You do, maybe do that every now and then? I, I do every year. Okay. Yeah. Lahaina. Which oh, is cool. Man. Yeah, Bummer. hearts out yeah, to Lahaina. Um, all my friends out there lost everything, Dang. like, Holy literally. Shit. And yeah. the tattoo shop that I worked out every June now looks like a parking lot, you know? And, like, yeah, it's, it's really, Dang. really heavy. Man. Yeah, that sucks. Yep. So you you travel to tattoo. You probably could go anywhere, right? Yep. Like and just like permanently live there. Yep. But you keep coming back here. Definitely. What are why you know other than like it's where you're from? Like what are the reasons? Yeah. Um, I think I really feel like we're in like one of the best places on earth. Yeah. <laughs> like actually, yeah. Um, for a lot of different reasons, and the economy being one. 
you know, we, we are living like statistically very high yeah. compared to a lot of other places, even the, in the U.S. Um, I love the weather. I really, really do. Even in the winter, you just got to wear more clothes and, yeah. you know, it's just beautiful outside. Yep. Um, we're a couple hours away f- from like really immaculate scenery up yeah. on Lake Superior and whatnot. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's just a great place to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Until well, like, the, the value thing too that you kind of mentioned that kind of started this conversation, I'm sure plays into it as well. That yeah, you can move somewhere that might be ha- enticing for other reasons, but yep. yeah, just the quality of life and the cost of living, something we talk about all the time. Just the combination of all the yeah. things. You yep. know, yeah. That's I've said that a thousand times on YouTube already, <laughs> but like it's yeah. Hearing it from someone else. Yeah, it's is nice to hear from you, yeah. you know. Yeah, I could live anywhere. You know, yep. I could I could make a good living living anywhere, and I choose here. Yep. You know, because it's just awesome. It's Every time, spot. yeah. There, there's nowhere else I'd rather have a home base. Yeah. Have you ever motor- ridden a motorcycle up the North Shore? Yeah. Okay. I I rode around Lake Superior Sick. with my dad. Actually, Sick. we just put some tents on the back of our motorcycles. And yeah. I think we did it in like four nights or five nights, something like that. That's well, a good clip. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. So like into Canada? And yeah. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Very cool. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And like the way the scenery changes from Duluth to Grand Marais, yeah. it does the same thing by the time you get to like Thunder Bay. Yeah. And as you keep going, it's just better and better and just different. Mm-hmm. And, ugh, it's yeah. Immaculate. That's cool. I love that. I love that whole region. It's like, yeah. I could I could see living there, but the economy isn't quite the same. You yeah. know, I think I'd get maybe a little bored. Uh, Definitely. You know, but being two hours from Duluth, two and a half, whatever, is so nice. I love yeah. it up there. You know. Definitely. Um, very cool. The I'm thinking about the like. You haven't really lived anywhere. Like, is there anywhere that is there anywhere that you have been that you think is like second place <laughs> that you would cons- most realistically consider if t- Twin Cities vanished? If the Twin Cities <laughs> From vanished, <beneath> us. <laughs> um, if the mosquitoes start actually killing us, <laughs> yeah. um, well, could you quickly inside. could you just list off a couple? You mentioned Hawaii, like a couple other places you've gone. So you you tattooed in Hawaii, like yep. on a regular yep. basis. I tattoo in Hawaii on a regular basis. Um, I've also been to Dallas. I've been to Denver, Breckenridge, um, in Colorado, um, Chicago. Um, I've done conventions in. Boston and like the Bahamas. Oh wow! Um, I tattooed in Cape Town, South Africa this winter, and that was cool. That's wow. cool. Um, yeah, th- those are the places that that I've gone that I would regularly go back to. Yeah, okay. I have family in Chicago, so I'm starting to kind of get a professional working relationship with the shop there. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so any thoughts on second? And if you couldn't live here, where else would you live? I think it might be Colorado, up in Summit yeah, County. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. But specifically, like, not Denver, like, out in the mountains. Yep, Brecon- Summit is County. Is that near Breckenridge? It is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so my aunt lives in Frisco, which is in oh, between yeah. Copper Mountain and Breckenridge. And yeah. It's just the best out there. It's cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool part of... I mean, that's, yeah, one of the coolest parts of Colorado, if not the country probably just aesthetically and you know yeah that's Colorado is an interesting spot where it has the you know wildfires and stuff that it deals with but not as much there that's yeah. a little far enough away that knock on wood doesn't seem like it deals with it definitely but, yeah. but avalanches I, oh dang there was a time <laughs> I was doing a guest spot in like March of probably 2018 I was there for a month and there was like the snowstorm of a decade and there were avalanches all over 80, I think, or is it 70? The, the interstate that you take up there. I think it's 80. I should know this. Um, yeah. It's 80. Okay. It's 80. Okay. Um, but avalanches blocked everyone in to that, like, Breckenridge, Frisco, Silverthorne, Leadville area. And it was so bad that the, the mountains, the resorts, couldn't even operate their chairlift. Oh, my God. And so Whoa. we're tattooing all of these people because they can't get out <laughs> of the town to they can't go snowboarding they can't do anything that was 
You're like, we're open. Wow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a gold mine. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Make we some can, snowboard money. Hopefully that they don't find that we set off these avalanches. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, that was fun. That's cool. Uh, okay, well, mm, we'll do that in a second. You like to fish. Yeah. Yeah, let's hear about that. That's something we do not really talk about. Yeah, like, what style of fishing are we talking? I met a lovely human, Mr. Ben Erb, when I was in St. Cloud for college, and he taught me the joys of river fishing. Ah, oh, um, fly fishing then? Nope, just... Putting oh. a weight and a hook with a worm on the bottom and seeing what you get. And Minnesota has so many cool species of fish. So yeah. I love the Minnesota River. The St. Croix is insane. Um, the Root River, Rum River, I mean, Otter Tail River. There are so many rivers within like three hours specifically that are just oh. unbelievable. What's yeah. coming out of these rivers? Um, I'm gonna start with my favorite. We got the lake sturgeon, which get to be 70 inches or something like that, 70 or 80, like huge Whoa. prehistoric fish. They look like sharks, they feel like sharks. Yeah, they're, they're crazy. crazy. Crazy fish. They look like skeletal like creatures almost. Yeah. yeah. By the way, cool. I have a cabin in Mora, Paul's told you. There's sturgeon in the river, it's a snake river. Wow. Yeah. It's like one of only a few that have sturgeon. So that's awesome. You can come up sometime. If you okay. Want. Yeah. Excellent. I'm yeah. going to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. These things are crazy. Yeah, man. dude. Dinosaurs. <laughs> They're <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Um, other like sucker fish would be like the red horse family. Um, greater red horse, river red horse, silver red horse. Um, super interesting looking fish. You've probably never seen one before, but... Are these all bottom feeders? Is that yeah. what pretty much all exists in rivers? I've uh, never river no. fished before. Yeah. I mean, they, they have everything in okay. a river. It's just, are you going to fish the top or the bottom? Yeah. And you can also catch everything off of the bottom. Um, but yeah, walleye fish rivers, northern bass. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. Uh, okay, so... You mentioned a few rivers. What what's your like favorite? What's your favorite spot to fish? I can't tell you that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, actually. No, Smart. no. It it depends on what you want to catch. Because if you want to like be surprised every time, literally like where um, Minnehaha Falls enters the uh, the river there. I mean, yeah, you can catch anything that exists in Minnesota right there. Crazy. More or less. Yeah. Um, catfish, carp pike uh walleye sunfish wow yeah. everything right there i mean that makes sense yep. yeah that the power of that waterfall i'm sure is like sending stuff there and then yeah so most of the people that i know that like to fish it's more of just like uh i like to drink and yeah. sit on water <laughs> is yeah. that part of it for you or is it you sound like you're really after some weird I, stuff i need like Peace and quiet. I want to watch a little twig float down the river. Uh -huh. You know, I, I really just want quiet. It's and, for like the zen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fishing is good just because you're out there by water, not really because you're fishing. And that's of cool. course, there's a time and place for drinking beer and fishing, and that's ice fishing. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah. Do you do that? Minimal work fishing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I have. I can't say that I regularly do it. I don't even know where like my ice auger is anymore. <laughs> okay. It might not be there anymore. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it, it's great. If you've never done it, you got to try. Oh, it. I've done it. My dad owned an ice fishing lure company when I was growing up. What? Yeah, Bad Dog Lures. He's like a a big. Really, I mean, he loves fishing, but ice fishing specifically. Nice. Which, yeah. So, I, I, not, that wasn't for me, but uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've been out there for sure. <clears throat> yep. It's all about preparation. Just like winter biking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just bring the right stuff and you'll have a great time. Dude, my brother is obsessed with ice fishing. He, like, I mean, fishing in general, but ice fishing, dude, he loves it. I, like, gave him ice fishing presents for Christmas and he was like, dude, he's like a kid. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, like dude. Nice. Like, oh, that's awesome. I know what I'm getting you for the rest of time. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's cool. Um, is, uh, I think, does it seem like a good time to go to? I think so. Okay. Just little quick hitters, some fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right. This is like quick Mix reacts, favorites. Don't think too hard about okay. it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and if you just don't have an opinion, that's okay. Um, do you have a favorite grocery store? Chain. 
Favorite grocery chain. Oh man, I'm thinking too hard already. But like company. Company. Um, I most frequently just go to Lunds because there's one right by me. Sure. No complaints about Lunds. Okay. Uh, solid. Good, good solid place. That's, probably, that's food. probably my pick. Too. Trader Joe's for snacks. Costco for bulk. Yeah. Yep. That sounds. That's good. That's a good You're, trio. I, I feel like that's everyone. <gasps> no, you'd be surprised. I'm, really? I'm a Kowalski's guy in really? Whole okay. Foods. Yeah. They want and and people want to know. Like we get we. Like people wow. from outside of Twin Cities okay. want to yeah. know what the grocery store scene is like. What about gas station? This one's hotly contested in our yeah. team here. I, I am just a holiday dude. Oh, man. I was going two for two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. It's wrong, but it's fair. <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite, like, well, do you have a favorite cuisine in Minnesota? Like oh, a, man. Or a few. So, first place would be Thai, then Indian. Um, and I definitely have a favorite Indian place, India House okay. on Grand Avenue in St. Paul. Yeah. Sure. Very good. Um, and then Thai food. I'm actually kind of, there's one in Osseo. It, it's so, so good. Um, but I never grab dinner when I'm out there because I only work out there. Sure. Mm. Um, so I'm looking for one closer to Minneapolis or Hopkins where I live. Yeah. Interesting. There is one in St. Paul called Pad Thai. That's dank. Nice. Very, very good. And like $11 for like a plate of pad thai. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, that, that place is really good. I don't know. Uh, there's like, you know, amazing Thailand. That's solid. I think I like pad thai a little bit more. It's like a little more unass- unassuming. Like yeah. they're not like gussying up the place, which I like yep. a place that, that's gussied up in fairness. Yeah. I'm kind of, yeah, I like that stuff. But. I love amazing Thailand, yeah. but um, I feel like they're kind of expensive and it is like yeah. you're paying for that atmosphere. Yeah, you're paying to be bit. in the, in the yep. spot. Yeah. Pad Thai, very much the opposite. I will try it. I mean, that name, my God. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite, how about, okay, you, yeah, I guess you said favorite restaurants. If India, Indian is your favorite cuisine, India house, favorite restaurant, is that fair? I don't think that's fair necessarily. Um, I feel like my favorite restaurant would be Victor's. Okay. Oh, have cool. you been to Victor's? Oh yeah. I have not. Wow. Yeah. Okay. On Lindale, right? Um, or is it, am I thinking of the one? Is it on it's, Grand? Uh, yeah, Grand, Grand and like 38. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Really? Yeah, I've never heard that. that. Oh, Victor's I don't is even live very that far good. Over there. Wow. Yeah. You definitely need to try it. Go for their breakfast. Go for their lunch. Go for their dinner. Cool. It's really good food. What is it? Cuban? Cuban. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Crazy. Great food. Crazy. That's good cool. rack. Uh, okay, how about um, <laughs> parks or outdoor space in all the metro? Parks or outdoor space? Mmm. Franconia. Franconia, <laughs> if that counts. Shout out. That, that's I'm, really great. I'm learning stuff. Yeah. That is a hike yeah. um, from the actual city. I really love around like the chain of lakes any of the like nice grassy spots by the lakes in yeah. Minneapolis, Lake Harriet, um, Bode Makaska, and then Cedar. Um, great. Tough to beat. They're, they're it sick. really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, coffee shop. Coffee shop. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> so now I'm a Hopkins boy and I gotta just say Monka Beans. Oh, dude, Main yeah. Street. I played a show there when I was in like high nice. school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know the depot is closed down or is closed down? Oh, or something I didn't know like that. that. I saw it not that long ago and thought, man, the depot's still banging, huh? Yep. I guess not. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw an article that said it is closed or is closing. Crazy. I don't know. Maybe I'm spreading misinformation. Played a lot of shows there, too. As yeah. A, like oh, high yeah. school. Yeah, that was a great room. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Like your 15 friends came out and it felt packed. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, this is sweet. To be like a, a brand new, yeah, brand new to music. That was a cool, very cool place. Yep. Uh, what about um, so winter activity or just like way to get through the winter um, I have found myself <laughs> more and more working out a lot in the winter oh, just cool. going to the gym lifting weights doing like weight training literally just that favorite gym answer. oh you know planet fitness nothing but nice. the best <laughs> <laughs> PF baby okay Paul's got a couple thoughts on that I think yeah uh, okay it, if, <laughs> yeah I don't know mm. It, I would love to work with a personal trainer somewhere, but uh, yeah, just for convenience and everything. Yeah. Also, when I travel to work in Hawaii, I usually rent a van and bring camping gear. 
crash in the van, go to Planet Fitness for showers. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's 25 bucks a month for the for like membership national. that gets you every yeah. Planet Fitness. Yeah. That is so, kind of crazy. It is, yeah. It comes in clutch. I mean, they're basically relying on people not showing up because it's <laughs> yeah. so cheap. You know? <laughs> really. Like, if everybody showed up, they'd probably be sell packed because it's so cheap. Yeah. But, yeah. That's a great answer, though. I like that. That's one I typically don't mention we kind of think because we encourage people to like explore things to do outside during the winter to embrace it but yeah yeah getting, yeah getting, i feel like keeping your blood moving just get after it yeah yeah getting right yeah okay uh i used to snowboard i used to do a lot of snowboarding i knew that about you and then as you get older it's like it's just a lot of money to keep up with that and yeah. also my back hurts and yeah. stuff like that I think, dude, I want to snowboard, but I think about falling right now, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm really, good, you know? Yeah. Getting hurt at this, <laughs> yeah. we're not that old, but we're getting older every day. And, old know, enough to where it hurts dude. way more. I wanted to ask you about that. Did you ever have any close calls or bad spills winter biking? Not to scare anyone off, but... Okay, true story. I have never been down in the winter. Wow. Not wow. once. It, okay. It's like... It's like you're more likely to cut yourself with a dull blade. Yeah, you right. Know, the real sharp ones sure. you hold carefully. Yeah. Um, you definitely are aware that leaning too hard going a little bit too fast slowing down too fast you're probably going to fall so it's really easy to you're, stay super you're like more cautious because Definitely. you're like this is obviously dicey yeah <laughs> okay absolutely <laughs> that's cool uh mm, maybe you answered this you said lake harriet favorite body of water hmm mm. i guess superior counts too yeah that's there's so many there's ten thousand to choose from over <laughs> ten thousand yeah, that's tough. Favorite place to... I mean, is there is there one that you go to the most often? How about that? At this point, probably Lake Minnetonka, actually. That makes sense. Um, you're, close, you're close to it? Yep. It's massive. Yep. Huge. Yeah. I got a, a one that just occurred to me. Um, favorite sports arena or venue? Are you a sports guy at all? I'm not a sports guy. Uh, Twin Stadium? Great. Once the summer? Not uh, even that? No, it's um, been years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know. We'll cut that. I put, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's authentic. I appreciate it. Yeah, if, sorry, I went, with that. We went to a Twins game. If, if it wasn't for that, I guess I went to a Vikings game. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I think when I go, it's fun, but I've never bought my own ticket to any of them. Sure. Um, if it's baseball, I definitely want to go, like, like fourth inning yeah <laughs> i can't i can't do all yeah. 11 or 13 or yeah. whatever <laughs> yeah okay what about uh favorite radio station maybe a softball um okay so either the current or just npr yeah mm -hmm. simple as that yeah uh, um i don't know favorite state fair food corn regular corn not bad not a bad answer actually it's just so yeah. good <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, true Midwestern answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> true. True. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm running out here. I Fav think we're good. Favorite ride at Valley Fair. Oh. Um, the, it used to be in the big bank turn of Wild Thing. It was like there's a pole and then two carts on each top. You had to pay like 10 bucks to do it. it oh, literally I just. I think I remember that. Is it not there anymore? Or you I don't haven't been to Valley I don't Fair think in a so. Yeah, I've been, I've been in a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd say that one or just Wild Thing. That was so fun. It yeah. took me months to work up the courage to go on it. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. My mom bought us. I was us. scared when I was a kid. Yeah. I eventually got over it, but yeah. I had a season pass for like two years probably. Yeah. Which was like, I mean, yeah, as a kid. Anything better? <laughs> yeah. Coolest thing, but yeah, I, I think we we went on a day where it was like dead because it like rained part of the day, yeah. And we went like 13 times in a row where we would like go <laughs> nice. and we just like <laughs> be in the front of the line right away and just like and yeah, but yeah, I've had my fill for sure. Okay, least favorite highway, least favorite highway 494. Same, when yeah. is it ever convenient? <laughs> Same. Yeah, I've been I've been on record saying that. Least yep. favorite month, least favorite month, um. Man, what happens in February? Dude. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Speaking my language. Definitely feel like you're just like waiting for stuff to happen. Yep. Waiting for life to happen again. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to play a little game called How Minnesotan Are You? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I got to switch notes here. This is basically, we're just going to ask you a bunch of questions about uh, all sorts of things and determine how your level of Minnesotan-ness I, I gotta say, I was born in Fargo. Yeah. Oh well, that's 
Yeah. That, honestly, that's an upper hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, because there's very much in There's a lot of crossover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, we'll start easy. Have you been to the state fair? Oh, yeah. Have you been more than one time in a season? No. Same. Mm. Have oh, you ever... that, that's a lie. Sorry. Dr. Dog played two free shows two nights in a row. Fair enough. I'll count it. Count it. Yeah. 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 Uh, you went to both? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> uh, have you ever been to the state fairgrounds for anything other than the state fair? I played a show there once. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, really? That was fun. Yeah. That's we cool. got to be on the current like live session or whatever. They like aired our set. It was really fun. Cool. Right on. Well, are you are you in you're currently in a band? Yeah, I I play for uh, my friend named Gut Check. His group is called Gut Check. Okay. And then internet dating. I play upright bass for internet dating and electric bass for gut check. Cool. Out. Uh, out. Have you, I guess kind of. Have you ever worked at the state fair? I guess no. playing well, kind of. Counts. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, well, just as soon as he said, the world with rock and roll. Count. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of works. As soon as he said he hasn't been more than once in a season, then it's like okay, it probably that's hasn't true. worked. But I would consider. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, maybe you weren't getting paid. I don't know, but still, like that's. You're putting in work. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? Uh, are you? Do you have any preference, corn dog or pronto pop? I have corn dogs, way less than a pronto <laughs> pop. So I'm gonna go for a corn dog okay. over a pronto pop. Okay. Have you ever had lutefisk? I have had lutefisk. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever made it? I have not. Paul, okay. Paul is pissed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if uh, okay, you, lutefisk. Have you ever had lessa? Oh, yeah. Fan? Oh, yeah. It's a family thing. Okay. We make left, so... Yeah. Have you had hot dish? Yeah. Have you had bars? Bars. What do you... Oh, <laughs> like... Oh, dude, I bars. gotta show you. When we're Dessert done with this, bars. I gotta yes. show you Dessert a video. Bars, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Have you had bars and... Can you recall having bars and hot dish in the same day? Positively. <laughs> yeah. Like, how yeah. many times? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mean, like, like many, many times... It, a year? Like every year for the yeah. last lifetime or what? <laughs> okay. uh, what's your favorite part of the salad bar at a supper club? Cocktail <laughs> onions, cottage cheese, or canned mandarin oranges? Mandarin oranges! <laughs> okay. Fair. Uh, have you ever jumped in a frozen lake? No. Okay. Not, I, I don't think so. Have it's you ever it. driven on a lake? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. First, right? I think so. Yeah. Have you ever... First guess, dude. Have you ever used a chainsaw to cut a hole in a lake? Not a chainsaw. That would be so sick. Auger, though. Auger? Augers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've augered a lake. So, in uh, Bayport... What's down right before Stillwater on 95? Bay... uh, Bayport. Bayfield? Bayfield is up uh, by... Is on Lake Superior. Bayport. Okay. Yeah, must So, there's like an ice track on the river. The St. Croix freezes like three feet deep right there. And so I've brought my car and done some like ice messing around. Really? Like, go, go slide around on the ice. It is gnarly. Yeah, we should add that that's as a question. Minnesotan. Have you ever done ice <laughs> messing around? I gotta say, that's pretty Minnesotan. Uh, that's funny. Okay. Have you ever played hockey on a lake or a pond? Yes. Okay. Man, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Dude, seriously. Uh, <laughs> have you ever right. scraped uh, snow off your car with your bare hand? Yeah. I mean, you gotta. Yeah. Knuckles, man. Yeah. Just get in there. Credit card? Yeah. Okay. I've right. broken a credit card. Yeah. Scraping, scraping snow. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I've broken like a loyalty card. <laughs> oh, you know, to some whatever. Library yeah. card. Yeah, like a Speedway card back in the day. Okay. How many of these items do you own? Any clothing purchased from Fleet Farm or Menards? Okay, yeah. D- Dickie's shorts. Tongue. <laughs> Mostly for me. Yeah. Canoe paddle? I don't. I don't think I've ever bought one. I don't think I've ever had one. Okay. Um, a boat of any sort? I've never had my own. Okay. Uh, my dad had boats growing up. Okay. Sure. Crockpot? I do have a crockpot. Okay. Uh, flannel button-up. That's a... Oh, my God. I like... <laughs> <Which, laughs> shouldn't even it? ask that. Yeah. How about this one? Flannels. Choppers? Choppers. Oh. Surprised. What, what's a chop? Oh, I've... I don't think I've ever had any. Okay. okay. I, I only had to give them concepts, That's good. which I That's appreciate. Good. Yeah. yeah. Most people are like, I have no idea what that is. No clue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any Boney Bear album on vinyl? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Any book written by or about a famous Minnesotan? Hmm. Um, Flynn? Michael Flynn? Is he like a... Like a I remember that name sounds familiar, but I don't know if he's... I, don't, he... I, I feel like he's Minnesotan, maybe he's not. I don't, I don't know. know. We'll Could. give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't prove it. That yeah. You can't. He's not. Fixed gear bicycle. Oh yeah, I think you already mentioned that. But yeah, is that I'm throwing softballs now. I gotta, I gotta come up with some <laughs> hockey stick. Yeah. Okay. We we had a a signed Marion Gabrick. Oh wow. Um, hockey stick because there was like a silent auction at our elementary school. My mom was like, "We're getting a hockey <laughs> stick." That's pretty cool. What's the coldest wind chill you've ever experienced? Um, that would have been like the 2018 uh, polar vortex. Yeah. And it was so cold that my Subaru wouldn't start. <laughs> mm. Do you remember Subaru. what it was? In my head, I have a number for what that wind chill I, was. I feel like I remember negative 60 with wind chill. That's what I was like thinking, that. actually. Yeah. Crazy. I, I mean, it was an apocalyptic negative... feeling. Yeah. I, I remember actually feeling scared when I like opened the door. You know, if, if that kept up for even like a week straight, you yeah. know, we'd be, That'd be brutal. in a situation for real. Yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah, polar vortex. That was like the buzzword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, this is kind of an opinion-based one. What person, fictional or real, embodies Minnesota the most? Mm, probably Paul Bunyan. Mm. Yeah. Common answer, but that, like, a good he, one. He's got a flannel. He's yep. got a warm hat, and mm. he has like a best friend that's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, have you seen the Northern Lights? No, and uh, last month or whatever it was when they were visible, um, I even drove out of the city. Really? Um, I, I think I just took 35 North for like an hour and a half or so, and I went and sat and waited and didn't see any. Son of a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've only ever once seen it in Minnesota. It's like oh, on man. the North Shore. It's yeah. definitely bucket list. Yeah. Uh, you, you ever sit in a garage while a storm rolls in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch a football game in a garage? I don't think so. Okay. I guess, yeah, football's not really your thing. Yeah. Do you know what a Minnesota standoff is? I do not. Do you want to guess? I'm guessing it's like like when you're saying goodbye, like who's actually going to like... Mm. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. Get to the door. What about <laughs> if it's a uh, car or traffic related? Oh, just... Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you or anybody you know... Or have you or anybody you know ever driven a Zamboni? No. Okay. Do you or anybody you know own, know, own a jar full of rocks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, have you ever said the, the phrase, heavens to Murgatroyd? No, but that's a great song by Fair to Midland. <laughs> Is it really? Come back, Fair to Midland, please. Oh, dang. That, that's... <laughs> what, did you say that was from the Jetsons? Or No, it's like some... Some other Hanna Barbera okay. thing from way back in the day. You ever say Holy Buckets? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, Do you know what a Midwest Martini is? No. Do you want to guess? Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on the guess this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Michelob Light with an olive in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you? How often would you say you go to the Mall of America? Uh, when I have to. Correct answer. Do you know? Do you know where to park for the place that you go? Yes. Okay. Also correct. In answer. and out. Yeah. Are you Lindo Lane or Killebrew? Yeah, Lindo or Killebrew. Um, you know. Honestly, I don't think I do. I know the exit. I know the. The ramp. further north or south one. Yeah. Can't remember. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Uh, Do you know Prince's full name? No. Okay. I, I did at one point. I, I knew someone who grew up with him. Oh, wow. Crazy. What's his full name? Prince Rogers Nelson. Okay. Have you ever been to uh, Paisley Park? I have not. Okay. I have seen the little Prince prop motorcycle in the back of First Avenue. Have you guys heard of that? No. Uh-uh. Is it like backstage? No, it's in the garage. It's under a little tarp. That's cool. Oh, so wow. I, every time I get back there, I lift it up. Peak. Like, <laughs> that's cool. Um, this is probably easy. Have you ever caught a walleye? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> have you ever eaten a walleye? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you know how to fillet a fish? We don't oh, really yeah. talk about that. Okay, I assume so. Do you have any preference? Yeah, no, you already said this. All right, I'm going to say it anyway. Minnows, leeches, worms, crawlers, flies. Uh, crawlers, <laughs> for their adaptability, you can catch anything on a crawler. Uh, I will not fish with leeches because who wants to touch a leech? <clears throat> I'm so good on that. Yeah. So, like, crawlers first, minnows second. Okay. You ever call it pop? Cop, pop. Wait, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Still or just in your... I, in my childhood. I, I don't know when I graduated from pop to soda, but... It just happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you look right around and nobody else is really calling Somewhere it around yeah. puberty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you had old Dutch potato chips? Yes. Have you had a uh, top potato? Yes. Two combined? Probably. Probably. Yeah. What else? How else? Are you... Uh, on a fleet farm email list. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on a Menards email list? I'm not. Okay. Um, Ever been to a meat raffle? No, I, I feel like I just discovered those. Okay. No one yeah. with a fleet farm credit card. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. That's okay. a fleet farm line of questioning. Okay. I, I actually would have to say one. probably, but not to my knowledge. Okay. Uh, you need snacks. a whole section of Menards and Fleet. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, have you been to Brainerd? Yes. Have you mm. eaten at Betty's Pies? Is is that on thirty five? No, no. That's that like north, north of Two Harbors, actually. That was sorry. Those were disconnected questions. Okay. Betty's Pies, North Shore. I don't think so. Okay. Been to Spinanoli's? Yes. Okay. Yeah, pizza, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty good pizza. Yeah, too. yeah. Have you uh, ever sat in a giant Adirondack chair? Yes. This guy's done it all. Yeah, man. <laughs> You're yeah. I mean, four point nine out of five. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's there's been like nothing you haven't answered. Let me. I'm trying to think. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, wait, Paul. Oh yeah, Paul. No hit looking. Us. Well, you no. can look. What is the sound? Can you identify the sound. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> We're a loony bunch in here, huh? That must be, that must be picked up. And then last question, have you seen this man? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that man? We don't know. What's he? He's just in like everybody's <laughs> dining room. Yeah, yeah his, garage. Oh. Praying man. I like that we've asked this question a bunch of times and we've never huh. actually done the research to, to have it. I actually answer. looked it up. I was like, is this a famous or it's, it's not to my mind a famous artist. It's, it's like, it's, it must've been, you know, like how, you know how now there's like pictures of New York city that are like huge. Uh, it's like the Brooklyn bridge shot from like, a that's POV sold at Ikea. Yeah. Yeah. They're like images that you just see the one of the ox we've talked about, but like, oh, true, yeah. that, like that's an every flip. Yeah. So like things that are just like ubiquitous because they're like, you, like IKEA is a great example. Yeah, like IKEA, like, and everyone, everybody was like, "That's the sickest thing here," and cool. now everybody it. has it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in the yeah. you know sixties or seventies, that yeah. was. <laughs> I, and I, like, that paired with the like, uh, Hemcost ship, Hemcost. Oh, you know what we're talking I about? I might know what I it's like that big huge Norwegian ship that's actually in Fargo now. Okay, it's like a painting of it, or like an image I, like that, more or less? I, I feel like, okay, actually, what's really going on here is my grandma has that <laughs> for sure, and a picture of that shit. Sure. <laughs> You're just conflating but the two. But yeah, I'm pretty sure most people's grandmas would also have that. Yeah, if it they seems, have this painting seems here. reasonable. Yeah, here's the him cost. That's crazy, yeah. Big yeah. Also, I, it occurred to me how well this fits into the aesthetic of this room. Yeah. And yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, dude. So. I would say, by far, he is the most Minnesotan person we've talked to. Unless there's one that I wasn't on. No. Okay, that isn't saying anything, because you guys are interviewing people who are moving here. True. Well, we helped some people who lived in, like, Grand Rapids for, okay. like, five years or something yeah. like that. And Malcolm was from here. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he barely knew what we were talking Probably, about with any of these. Yeah, <laughs> and he's from like, he's like from like uh, now then. So you'd think more Minnesotan, like, you know, he's north of like Ramsey, you know? Okay. And yeah, you'd think he'd be more Minnesotan, but yeah, you, I mean, absolutely wiped the floors with everybody. So <laughs> congratulations. Well done. Uh, I think that's it. Any Are parting advice to somebody who's moving here? But any of the stuff we talked about could be, yeah, related to any of your interests or... 
I would just say in general, there's no bad weather, only bad preparation. Hey. Wow. Get get some good winter clothes, and you'll enjoy it. Clip that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for yeah, being here. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Cool. Later. Fade to black. Hit us up. <laughs>